Hi, and welcome back to Slim Pull Treats. Sorry, guys, this is what I look like after 12 hours in a tire factory. Just got out of work, and I had a request to talk about something from another person that I work with who's pretty much gone through the same thing. He wasn't morbidly obese, but he was overweight, and he had noticed some changes in people's behavior once he lost the weight, and then again when he gained it back again. But So we're going to talk about sometimes the way that people can treat you. We call this the last accepted prejudice. Now, I'm going to start off with a something I heard off of a movie once. I was watching a film, and it was about a young girl who was obese, and she was just her dealing with her own emotions in her teenage years. So, it's not the exact quote. I can't remember the exact quote, but here it goes. She says, I don't like eating in restaurants in front of people especially strangers. If I order a salad, everyone thinks, who the heck is she kidding? If I order a burger and fries, everybody thinks, well, no wonder why she looks that way. Look at what she's eating. So either which way, I cannot win. That statement really hit home to me because we're judged at every moment. In my break room, when I'm eating, um, even if I'm eating one of my healthy treats, people have questioned at first, are you off the diet? No, not. These aren't really your normal ones. Would you like to try it? Most people say no because they hear healthy and they figure that there's no taste. But let's get back on subject. So, you know, you can't win either which way. And that is true because people are looking at my meals and they are judging me. Um, I don't really get too much in the tire factory that I work because I've been working there for six years now. And people have really gotten to know me. Most everybody is extremely proud of the progress I've made, and they've been extremely supportive. Last year, when I was working, you could see me going up the stairs. You could see me struggling, even just to walk. I was falling. I was scaring people. I actually, one time, had to go behind my machine, got a little cut on my stomach. They thought that I needed stitches, but I refused to go to the nurse because the humiliation of the fat girl just cut herself on her machine. So, you know, you cover up what you're going through but in a retrospect of that people will sit there and I'll have an idea that's a really good idea or I'll do something amazing and I get ignored it's not that they mean to I don't know um, I'm just treated subhuman at that point in time and that has changed which sometimes I don't always think for the better I do have real friends, the friends that treat me the same at 300 pounds and versus now at 175. And those are true friends. Those are people realize I'm the same person that I've always been. And I really appreciate them. I even have people who don't particularly care for me with my personality. One person in particular, we just don't get along. But you know what? I respect him because he treats me the same here now as he did last year so back to the subject I've actually had bosses when something screws up in the machine sit there and tell me oh well you know you're just being fat and look yeah they're gonna say lazy they don't usually get that out before I say something when you're a big person people sometimes treat you like you're subhuman they will discriminate against you even though that they don't discriminate against people of race color their sex, or even sometimes their disabilities. But being fat is the last thing that people can discriminate against, and they do. My company does not condone this, and some of the higher bosses, when they've heard it, have said something to people, which, believe me, I do appreciate my company for that. I am going to say that. But when you're a big person, people, as I said again, treat you like you're subhuman. I see it all the time. This is always a very present in the workplace. Sometimes they say, oh, well, you don't need to help the fat chick. You know, she'll get it herself. I do need help. That's how I, I had a hernia before, but I'm sure all the hard work I had to do helped it get a little bigger. I did end up having to have an operation for it, which I'm better now. And thank God the operation went well. Now, you get judged very harshly sometimes 
And, you know, I'm anything but lazy. I'm the first person up in my house. I'm the last person to go to bed, tending to everybody else's needs. Sometimes I feel like the help, the nanny, or even just a housekeeper. And I feel underappreciated a lot and somewhat neglected. And I always turn to food for comfort with that. And I started to think to myself, my God, you're doing this to yourself. You're letting people treat you subhuman. You know, it's morbid obesity is more of a mental condition than it is a physical condition. I'm hardly ever hungry. It's just, it's psychological. The food makes me feel good. So, I eat. Now, the term morbid obesity, it is actually morbid obesity because it will kill you, whether it's high blood pressure, diabetes, or even your bone and joint discomfort that you go through every day. It takes us a lot just to get out of bed. Never mind how much it takes just to get moving, do a task. We work harder than anybody else just to get something done. And we usually do do it slower. But since losing the weight, I have moved differently. I've noticed my job is a lot easier. But even aside the physical effects that it will kill you, you sometimes give up part of your soul. You tend to lose your self-esteem you trade it in for food you sometimes even lose your pride and we fought, we as mobile obese people struggle with our mental and physical conditions every day and sometimes it comes out that we're cruel to people we tend to be angry we struggle with everything and we withdraw a lot. My mother used to say to me, lose the weight and people will treat you differently. I didn't think that they would, but they do. Just remember to stick with your friends who treated you the same no matter what. The people who support you. The people who love you. And those are the people you rely on to get through this every single day. And as I said, you just really cling on to those people and I want to thank them very much. We're going to have more stories on here. I know that you're seeing me after I've lost the weight. So it's kind of hard to see what I've been through. I'm having Lua and Savannah, which I have featured on pictures in my Facebook posts. We're chronicling their progress. They're in just got off of the first month. Both of them have lost tremendous amounts of weight. Lua has lost over 45. Savannah has lost over 20. We also have TJ and Diana. And they've lost, I think TJ's about 13 and Diana's just about 18 or 20 as well. I'm so proud of the two of them. I'm so proud of all four of them because this is a lifestyle change and it's very hard to do. It's hard to give up your old habits for new healthier ones, especially when you feel like people are judging you. I just want to say, please subscribe, share, like, and we're all in this together and we will have more discussions like this to help each other. I'll also have recipes and tips. And then you will see TJ, Diana, Lua, and Savannah. Thank you very much. That's Slimful Treats. And my Gmail is slimfultreats at gmail.com. And also friend me on Facebook. My name is Amy Smith. Have a good day.